so we pick up from where I was at last week, which was um, uh, I watched, of course, the last four episodes of Dragon Ball GT. And actually, you know, since I knew the ending in advance, it pretty much ended up exactly how I thought it was now that all of the, um, the Shadow Dragons were defeated. So, not bad. Uh, some intriguing things about it, but unlike the ending to, like, Dragon Ball Z, uh, it's difficult to say that GT ended at a place where there couldn't be future Dragon Ball if they chose to make it, other than the fact that they probably haven't touched it in a long time, and people may... I, I haven't heard any official opinions of this, but I wouldn't be surprised if people thought GT was a very milking the cow sort of series. Even more so than some of the seasons in Dragon Ball Z that were drawn out, and perhaps even Dragon Ball Z Kai. Anyways, watch that. Ended at a good place. Watched um, the Dragon Ball GT movie, which is actually, I think, a TV special, or movie-length TV special, A Hero's Legacy, and it was okay. Dragon Ball adventure sort of stuff with them. Um, different characters and well not exactly it's kind of hard to explain it but the basic idea is kind of a more settled down take after Dragon Ball Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball GT but it kind of ends at the same place that the GT series did in fact I if I had to guess it probably took place just before the ending scene of GT, but, oh well, anyways, on to other stuff I watched, because I did watch more than Dragon Ball GT, but these next few things are going to sound like I went on a shonen run, so I watched Bleach Set, Bleach Set 10, and um, other than the first, maybe disc or two being pretty normal, I actually thought it got really interesting and you know that that's basically why we watch these long running slow shows right it's because it's not because they're always good throughout the series and it's not because they're mostly good throughout the series per se it's because they're okay through the series and then they're really fucking awesome for a little while there i mean, uh, i can remember that about every long running series that i can think of one piece maybe being kind of strange in a different way. As in, like, One Piece, it really does feel like a build-up to um, the cool stuff that happens. Everything else, it's kind of a wandering around until it gets there. Anyways, I enjoyed Bleach Set 10, and it ended at what is probably a perfect place where it's not really done with the story arc, I think, but Well, I, d I don't exactly know what's about to happen next. It just didn't stop in, like, the middle of a battle or anything like that. So, it was a good place. There may be something else in the next couple of episodes based upon stuff I've heard, but I don't know what that is. I'm trying not to think about it, and I'm hoping that the rumor I heard of his skipping episodes is not true and was somebody's misunderstanding, perhaps? Hey, I'll find out next week. Or, not next week, but... November, I think, is when the next Bleach set comes out. It's already listed. I can't remember. Um, my brother and his wife finally came over again this weekend to watch more Yu Yu Hakusho, so we watched eight more episodes of that. And I can't help watching this stuff thinking that maybe I had seen some of these episodes before, except I'm pretty sure we're getting where I hadn't seen some stuff before. I probably started the episode of the story arc we're on now, which is a dark tournament, I th think. And I think I may have started it, and it definitely starts at an interesting place. So I'm guessing something else came up at the time and I stopped. But now, I've got people I'm watching it with, and um, my brother's wife, of course, is eagerly watching Yu Yu Hakusho because, um, of a certain storyline that she's interested in, I think. I'm not sure if we're in the middle of that or not. 
because I think for the past couple storylines, she said it's the next storyline. And maybe she's been right. It's been built up, but I don't know. Anyways, entertaining, good. Once again, kind of interesting to watch, um, to, to look at the Yu Yu Haku show Blu-ray release. And um, it's, just, it's just fascinating how much they've cleaned up the video a lot. It, I think they did a real good job with it. That may be a... I'm not quite sure if the recent, uh, the most recent Yu Yu Hakusho DVD releases used that video, or rather if the Blu-ray is using that video, and you know, if it's available on both DVD and Blu-ray, but if this the Blu-ray copy is the only one with that video, then that may be a good reason to get it. Otherwise, the other thing I did was I watched uh, Lost Universe. It's something that um, I started once, was kind of annoyed by it, and decided I could watch something else better, but I chose to pick it up again for a couple of reasons. First of all, I want to start reducing my list of um, stuff that I've put on hold and probably watch the two anime I dropped. Maybe there's three anime. Oh, wait. Akazuki uh, Cha Cha. That one I dropped because I need to download it and that looked like it would be more trouble than it was worth. And I'm not downloading anymore, so that one probably has to remain somewhere. Maybe rewatch the episode I have and then uh, put it on hold with the other stuff that will be indefinitely on hold, such as Corrector Yui. <sighs> but basically, um, the other reason I wanted to watch Lost Universe is because um, I understood that it's got a very light connection to Slayers. Now, I think part of that is that. Um, there's a more direct connection in terms of, um, I think, uh, somebody who wrote one of the stories also wrote the story for Lost Universe. I don't know for certain, but all I know is that the basic idea is the ultimate entity that supposedly created the world in the Slayers universe. And that's actually what's nice about Slayers, is that there's a good understanding of the world, or maybe not necessarily good understanding, but a kind of theoretical understanding of the world that's very fascinating to watch, to listen about. And it even shows up in the very first half of the first season. And Lost Universe is connected because the Slayer's universe is called Red World, I believe, and the entity that supposedly created Red World created another world called Black World, where in Red World, the concentration of power in entities such as um, Shabernigdo and uh, I think the Water Dragon King. Is that what it was called? It was Water Dragon something. Well, I th the concentration of powers that were in them show up, I guess, in Lost Universe in the form of the Lost Technology ships. Which is not really that spoilerific since... While the story is about the Lost Technology ships, it's not really about their origins. It's really about people finding them and using them, basically. And our main character who has one. Oh, well. So that is a very fascinating way of looking at Lost Universe, and I thought it was actually the most interesting thing. Um, going back and rewatching it, starting over from the very beginning, I can understand why I didn't want to watch it back then, because even right now... I really didn't like the characters in it. Uh, part of that may be the dub, though. I would switch to subtitles, except I was doing a ton of Minecraft stuff over the weekend. And I kind of wanted to do two things at the same time. But basically, um, this time, you know, since I could overlook the things like that because my time wasn't solely focused on Lost Universe, um, you know, it was actually pretty good beyond that. I tried again without the dub to see if maybe it was the dub itself that was hitting on my nerves, but the truth of the matter is, I'm not. I don't think it's exactly that. I think part of it is that. Well, it may have been even worse this time because I probably went in there comparing it to Slayers, and I really like the cast of Slayers, whereas the cast of Lost Universe feels lacking. I guess I could go into more details, but it'd probably be better to go into those details with video samples if I ever do that, and I'm not going to do that today. Now, I say that, 
But I thought Lost Universe actually got more interesting when you get over that hurdle of, oh, these are the characters and these are the kinds of things they do. Some endearing stuff about them um, popped up after that. And the story I thought was actually pretty intriguing because the Lost, the idea of um, Lost technology stuff in general is kind of amusing or entertaining or interesting. Yeah. I, I guess that's what I have to say. So, the cool for me, the coolest thing was an interesting way of thinking about their universe. Second coolest thing was the story was actually pretty neat. And then after that, I wasn't a big fan of the characters, but whatever made them so annoying died down enough so that it wasn't so bad. Yeah, I guess that's it. And so... If, this coming week, I'm gonna. I'm. I'm not sure if I'm gonna watch anything surprising. I may just watch all the stuff that arrived today, since a lot of it did. So, I guess I'll get on top of that.